Иренко приезжает и бьет ворота. Он нет! Николас завладевает шайбой и мчатся рассекая лед. Мерсер Вильямсу. Вильям забудет у центра пути на ровном. What if everything we think we know about electricity is wrong? What if your home could run on one little crystal that never dies, powering your life for years at a time? It sounds like science fiction, a fairy tale for our modern age. But that's exactly what one wild-eyed inventor claims he's figured out. His name is John Hutchison, and for decades, he's been building a so-called free energy machine in a humble workshop. The remarkable works of Canadian inventor John Hutchison has drawn widespread attention from businessmen and government scientists since 1979 when he began using ultra-high electromagnetic frequencies to transform matter in some very unusual ways. It has come to be known as the Hutchison effect. Hutchison is an amateur scientist who has devoted a good part of his adult life trying to prove out the theories of a controversial Yugoslavian physicist named Nikola Tesla. Experimenting with the electromagnetic field is the key to several of John's discoveries. One of them is called the crystal energy converter, or power cell, which seems to produce sustainable electricity from the air around us. Hutchison wasn't trained in any fancy university. He's the kind of self-taught tinkerer whose lab looks like a jumble of scrap metal and coils from ancient radios. To the world outside, he must look like a lovable eccentric, the kind of old guy who tells unbelievable stories about bending the laws of physics. And yet his story is starting to turn heads. John Hutchison is a lanky Canadian in his 70s, an outsider who's obsessed with the work of Nikola Tesla and other forgotten geniuses. Back in the 1970s, he got attention for bizarre experiments called the Hutchison Effect. The Hutchison effect has been characterized as a lift and disrupt system, or a collection of effects that include the levitation of various materials, along with the molecular distortion and disruption of metals, plastics, and organic compounds. In those early days, he wired up a mishmash of Tesla coils and generators in his garage. He claimed metal objects would wiggle and float in midair, or even melt on their own inside a wooden box, things that no one could explain. Spectators were amazed, calling it anti-gravity and miracle physics. But university scientists scoffed, saying it was trickery. Still, those experiences planted an idea in Hutchison's mind. Maybe there is some hidden force of nature we don't understand yet. I've seen levitation of steel, steel ball bearings, glass, where they will levitate. Unbelievable. I've seen electricity go right into the objects and a million pieces just fly apart. If he could make metal levitate with his contraptions, why not tap that energy for power? Over time, Hutchison decided that huge coils and levitating plates weren't a practical way to power the world. They draw a lot of energy and no one knows how to control them reliably. He realized he needed a new approach, something smaller and simpler. That's when he turned to crystals. Yes, crystals, the same kind you might think of as decorations or in geode collections. But Hutchison was following a line of research from a century ago. He studied Tesla's old notebooks and stumbled on the work of Nikola Tesla's student, Thomas Townsend Brown. Back in the 1920s, Brown had discovered that certain crystal-like materials and chemicals could make power appear out of nowhere in a vacuum tube. It was called a crystal battery, but the story goes that Brown was forced by rich industrialists to abandon it. They feared cheap power would ruin their oil fortunes. Hutchison thought, what if they were onto something? What if Brown had a clue that was buried by big business? So Hutchison decided to dig up that old secret himself. He started gathering mundane ingredients, quartz crystals, rock salt, chunks of silicon, even scrap from old electronic parts. In his messy workshop, he crushed these materials into fine powders. He poured the blend into jars along with a few pieces of metal, often two different metals like a positive plate and a negative plate, separated only by the crystal powder. Then he poked a wire, an electrode, into the mix, connected it to his improvised machine, 
and gave it a jump start with a high voltage jolt, just like jumping a car battery. According to Hutchison's story, something amazing happens next. After that initial kick of electricity, the mixture begins to hum with power all by itself. Electrons start flowing out of the device without any fuel being added. In other words, he claims the battery keeps recharging itself. Hutchison describes it in dramatic terms. The crystals inside vibrate on their own, catching energy from the vacuum of space, something scientists call zero-point energy. Each tiny crystal acts like an antenna tuned to some mysterious cosmic hum. As they jiggle, they push the metal plates slightly apart and let them spring back together thousands of times a second. Every time the metals squeeze and release, they create a little pulse of electricity. Then, with a simple one-way valve, like a diode he scavenged from an old transistor, all those pulses are collected into a steady stream of DC power. The result, Hutchison says, is an endless flow of electricity, a battery that never drains. How much power? Hutchison claims a surprising amount. He likes to brag that even a single crystal unit could light a dozen LED bulbs or run a small fan nonstop for years. He wired many units together. In one story, he calls it the Hiroshima cell battery and says this mega battery in Japan produced on the order of tens of thousands of watts. According to Hutchison, it lit dozens of lamps and ran tools in a workshop. It was like plugging your house into a piece of rock, he says in interviews. He points out that such a system would make conventional electricity obsolete. No more power bills, no more dirty coal plants, no more gas stations. One crystal pack, and you could drive your car or cool your home. Essentially, he claims, it could replace the entire grid. If that sounds crazy, you're not alone. Officially, no legitimate scientist has ever verified Hutchison's device. Tests by government agencies and universities reportedly turned up nothing. The mainstream says it violates the laws of physics. You can't get out more energy than you put in. Skeptics have dismissed him as a crank or a hoaxer. They note that in public demos, the voltages and currents Hutchison shows are tiny. Good for lighting LEDs or low-power gadgets at best. But here's where the story gets juicy. Hutchison and his followers accuse those skeptics of being part of the cover-up. They claim that whenever real attempts were made to reproduce the battery, something suspicious happened. Either nobody was given the exact recipe, or officials made sure the tests failed. Hutchison insists the critics never had the secret ingredient or method right, because maybe those methods involve proprietary knowledge that they didn't want public. He certainly believes powerful interests don't want this technology out. Hutchison tells a dark tale. In the 1990s, he and his partner, she goes by Yin, tried to take their lab overseas to keep working. They even negotiated with the German government to move his 22-ton laboratory from Vancouver to Germany. But on moving day, something sinister occurred. Hutchison says that a convoy of trucks showed up at night and hauled away his entire lab. And when the Germans demanded their equipment, Canada casually replied, Oops, all we found were drums of toxic waste. In other words, his high-voltage gear and crystals vanished, replaced by drums of PCPs. Hutchison was devastated. Until 1989, when I wanted to immigrate to Germany, uh, the Canadian government was activated by civilians to confiscate my lab. So the lab was actually seized by the Canadian officials and held actually in Surrey part of it, and, but anything dealing with Tesla equipment was gone, disappeared, and I cannot find out to this day whatever happened to it. He felt sure that big Canadian energy companies and government agencies colluded to sabotage him. Ever since then, Hutchison's story has only grown more conspiratorial. He accuses big oil and big government of working together. His version goes like this. Imagine you are an oil tycoon or a coal baron. Would you allow a cheap, inexhaustible power source to hit the market? Not a chance. You'd make sure it never leaves the lab. So according to Hutchison, energy corporations and their puppet politicians have spent decades marginalizing him. They turned him into a laughingstock, 
funded SmackDown documentaries, and even cracked down on his lab. The media, he charges, is in on it too, giving him zero coverage or a smear campaign at every turn. It's a classic David versus Goliath tale, the lone inventor fighting greedy giants. Emotionally, Hutchison plays the part of the plucky underdog perfectly. He tells young people online, they don't want you to have free energy because it's not their turn to profit. His message resonates especially with a young audience that already distrusts authority and wants the planet saved. He points to every blackout, every oil spill, and says, this is what you get when you rely on dirty fuels. But I've held a real glimpse of a clean future in my hands. The idea of living without polluting industries, of walking out of your front door and never seeing a power line, has an almost utopian allure. It's a story that teases at our deepest hopes, a world where technology is magic, not locked up behind patents and regulations. So is John Hutchison onto something revolutionary or just spinning a good yarn? We don't have the proof either way. The key is that with powerful corporations on one side and a single inventor on the other, the stakes feel enormous. Hutchison wants us to wonder, if this really was a hoax, why go through all the trouble to bury it? What if the truth is simply too profitable to reveal? He leaves us with that cliffhanger. Maybe one day, some kid in a garage will build the crystal battery right, and the whole energy industry will be blindsided. For now, Hutchison's crystal generator remains a legend whispered on the internet. The facts are fuzzy, and the science is unverified. But as a dramatic tale, it's hard to beat. A forgotten technology, hidden away by money and power, with the fate of the world hanging on a rock. So the next time you pay your electricity bill, remember John Hutchison. Ask yourself, could it really be that simple? And if so, what will it take to let this secret out? In the end, the future of energy may lie buried in plain sight, in a single brilliant crystal kept humming in the dark until the world is ready to listen.